certainly want to uh, thank you and welcome everyone to uh, this meeting. Uh, we thank you for taking time out of your um, schedules to be a part of this discussion. Uh, and this is a discussion, of course, uh, that started um, early in 2020, uh, and it continued in uh, to March of 2021. And so we just want to have uh, a discussion about whether or not this is something that we want to continue in terms of uh, pay stations and uptime. I'm Lisa Goodwin, Deputy City Manager, and again, thank you for being here. I do want to recognize uh, Councilor uh, Mimi Woodson uh, and Councilor uh, John House and Mrs. House, and thank you for being here. We certainly appreciate that. Um, so again, you know, we want to just talk about, you know, where we were uh, and in terms of uh, uh, these meetings. Uh, we did, of course, February of 2020 uh, was really at the height of the pandemic, and we started the discussions at that point, and then we did not have another meeting until March of 2021, at which time, based on the comments that uh, we received um, at that particular meeting uh, from the businesses and the public that was in attendance, uh, their sentiments were that we should, um, again, uh, because of the pandemic, and uh, we should halt the uh, discussions on uh, parking stations. Uh, they were not operating at full capacity, uh, having uh, gone through and dealing with a lot of different things. We did halt it. We took it to um, City Council right after that to let them know that the sentiments of those that were in attendance wanted us to halt that. And we told them at that time that we would come back uh, at the beginning of 2022 to start the discussions up again. Uh, we did meet, staff and I met uh, with, um, at Old, uh, Wolverton, Uptown's CEO, uh, in late October. Uh, and in that meeting, uh, you know, we talked about coming back and, and talked about whether or not this is something that uh, we wanted to bring back and have open discussion about and thought that we should do that. Uh, I do want to make it very clear that we are not advocating for parking stations or pay, I mean pay stations or parking meters. In no way are we advocating for it. This meeting here today is strictly to get and to garner your input on whether or not you think this is something that we need to continue to explore, something that we need to, uh, to do. And it's all going to be based on what we hear from you. That's it. Again, we're not looking to say we're gonna we want to do parking meters. That's not what this meeting is about. But I think it is such that we do want to share with you kind of where we left off, so that um, uh, you know what we were talking about, what we were thinking about uh, when we came to you back in uh, 2021. We know that we are still in a pandemic. We know that businesses are still not operating at full capacity. We know that you, just like us, the industry, in the various industries, uh, disciplines, are still having problems hiring um, employees. And so we recognize all of that. We get it. Uh, but again, we just thought it would be good for us to come have a discussion with you. Let's talk about um, you know uh, where we were uh, in what you would like to do moving forward. At this meeting, you may say, no, stop it here, let's not go any further. Then it's a done deal. Uh, so again, we just want to have that discussion. We do want to share that, you know, when we uh, were having these meetings, uh, we did have a committee that we were working with, and um, that committee consisted of, consisted of myself, the um, director of Metro, Rosa Evans, um, Everett Fleming, who is here, raise your hand, Everett, he is our um, the planning division manager, um, Toronto Crawford, who is the parking manager, uh, Ed Wolverton, of course, is uh, president and CEO of Uptown, who's here, Reynolds Bickerstaff um, was a part of the committee as well, who was the immediate past chair at that time, and we had a new member that came on, we have not even this committee, uh, as it is today, has not even met, but Libba Dillion uh, with uh, Fountain City um, Coffee, co-owner Steve Morse, CSU, and then Command Sergeant Grant with the Columbus Police Department. 
the parking enforcement area that we are, uh, that we work under and within, uh, is from Bay Avenue to 3rd Avenue, 19th Street to 14th Street, and everything uh, within that area uh, is, uh, that's encompassed within that area is considered the uh, parking management division um, area that we enforce. The Columbus Consolidated Government has um, several off-street parking areas that you are very much aware of. The River Center, which opened in March of 20, uh, 2000, has um, 685 spaces. The Bay Avenue Garage, which some call the Sonoma's Garage, opened in 2004, 769 spaces. And the Front Avenue Garage, which some call the CSU Garage, uh, was uh, opened in 2006 with 535 spaces. Then we have the 9th Street parking lot that has 125 spaces, a total of 2,114 spaces, off-street spaces. We, of course, just recently um, acquired the Sonoma's uh, parking deck, which has 634 spaces. That number is not included in this. We are still working that. We don't know at this point uh, how many of those spaces will be uh, designated as part of public spaces. We know because of the various departments that are going to be in those new buildings um, as a city uh, facility, government center, if you will, uh, the public will have to have some space in there. We, at this point, have not yet determined just how many of those spaces will be used for that. If it's one floor, two floor, et cetera, so we're still working that. In terms of on-street parking, uh, of course, the avenues, the streets, Broadway, uh, we have just over 1,600 spaces. And so off-street, on-street combined, uh, over uh, 3,700 spaces are available. Uh, the parking enforcement, they operate Monday through Friday uh, at 8 to 6 p.m., no weekends, nights, or holidays, and uh, CPD also handle parking uh, issues as needed. At this point, I'm going to ask uh, the parking management division manager to come forward and just to share with you some of the new technology that is out there that we uh, are looking at. Serena Crawford. Okay, um, good evening again. Um, I, okay, and I'm Ms. Ms. Crawford, the parking division manager. So the pay stations that we're looking at, they're basically going to be a pay station of 10 parking spaces per block. So depending on the avenue or the street that we you know, decide on or choose, those pay stations will be per 10 spaces. Now, with these pay stations, you do have the ability to get out your vehicle and be able to go and pay for that particular parking space to on a time limit. But how to do that is where we're going to implement parking numbers on whichever street or broad, uh, whatever street or avenue we may choose in this decision and you'll get that parking space number out when you step out your vehicle and you'll take that parking space number to the machine and it put that information as well as the machine will take credit cards, it will take it will take um, bills and at that time we are still going to implement by um, validation code. So, you know, if we might implement those things so that businesses can, you know, give out to their customers for those particular reasons. So those are the type of pay stations that we're looking to um, bring to the uptown area. These are other types that we looked at as well. These are just a smaller version just to kind of limit the space that is on street, but it would still have the same concept that we're looking at. With being of these um, pay stations, we have the new technology of pay by phone, which I know a lot of you have realized that's the new way of doing things by the hand of your phone. So with this process, it would be the same thing. You will basically go out to get out your vehicle, look at the parking space number that you're in, and you will still have to register whichever app may be chosen during this process on that initial first step. Now after you do that in your initial first step, all your information is saved and so you, whenever you come downtown, you wouldn't have to put your credit card information back in there to do your payment for the parking. So you, whenever you're in the restaurant or wherever it is downtown, you're able to update your time on your phone. 
So that just gives you the easy, the easy comfort of doing it without having to go back to your vehicle with the pay by um, sale app, whichever one is shown. And then these are other areas in our neighboring and neighboring cities, <coughs> such as Atlanta, Macon, Savannah, and Auburn. These areas kind of have a dollar to dollar an hour type setting, which we're looking to implement those type of things here in Uptown. But it's all dependent on what the city wants and in, in regards to how much you will pay per two hours, per, per four hour time limit within the Uptown area. So just a few examples of some of our neighboring cities and what they're chosen to do with their pay stations and time frames and do in with their pricing. And at this time, I'm going to give it back to Ms. Goodwin to continue the part. Thank you. And again, uh, no rate has been decided upon. We've not even gotten to that point again because we want to hear from you. Uh, and some of the um, questions that we definitely want, um, you know, we're going to be posing uh, is, again, as you can see, is there an appetite at this point for uh, parking pay stations, parking meters, um, or the such? If so, where would you like to see them placed? Um, you know, should we look at a test site first? Should we look at just Broadway or just, you know, the two-hour time limit areas? Uh, and nothing else. But again, these are all things, no decisions have been made, uh, have been made, and um, is there additional technology out there that you would like to see? Um, things that we have not mentioned, that you have heard about, seen, or um, have, uh, have used, and that you'd like for us to consider. Um, so that's the conversation that we want to have. We've had um, some people to already to provide some questions to us, uh, you know, regarding uh, all of this uh, from uh, what the, uh, uh, for parking management, you know, what are the expenses of, of parking uh, management, what are the, uh, the revenues like, where did the money go, uh, that kind of thing. And so I can tell you that um, for in terms of expenses over the last five years, uh, you know, uh, just not including salaries, but just operational expenses, uh, 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 and such utilities and those kinds of things, maintenance and and, and those concerns. I mean, it's just over averages, just over a hundred uh, and five hundred and six thousand uh, dollars over a five-year period, just on average. Uh, a high of up to one hundred and forty thousand, just in the operational uh, budget. Uh, in terms of revenues, uh, just over three hundred thousand dollars. Where does that money go? In all cases with the city, that money goes into the general fund. Someone asked the question, well, can't we utilize that money and let it go back into the uptown um, for improvements? And unfortunately, that's just not how the city, um, the budget and revenues operate. You know, we have to, of course, have a, a balanced budget. And so whatever those expenses are, uh, there has to be uh, accompanying revenues to handle that. Uh, and so all revenue for all um, services, all departments, all divisions go back into the general fund. Um, and so I will pause here and um, I will take any questions uh, at this time. So I will yield to you. Anyone? Yes, sir. First of all, thank you for having this meeting. My name is Joe. Is that, is that mic on? Is that, can someone check to see if that's on? Thank you, Steve. First of all, I want to thank you for having the meeting. Uh, my name is Joe Cup. I live over in Windsor Park. And I was wondering where in town do you plan to uh, put these uh, meeting these uh, meters? The meters specifically in this discussion is just in the uptown district only. Only uh, in the uptown between Bay Avenue, Third Avenue, 9th Street, and 14th Street. In the in downtown. And how much revenue do you expect to uh, obtain from the 
meters? Well, what we have seen is uh, many communities with use of uh, parking meters uh, can get anywhere from 500,000 to well over, uh, you know, um, um, seven figures, uh, a million plus. Don't know, again, depending on the number that we have, the area that we have it, it just, so I really can't say, but I can tell you what other communities are receiving. I personally uh, have lived in a number of other cities and towns uh, here in Georgia and, uh, and, and around the country. And I would be against the meters. Mm -hmm. However, uh, I see that uh, there might be a trade-off. That is to say, I could be for the meters if we take down some of the unconstitutional traffic cameras that are located around the city. You put, take down one camera, you put up one meter. That way the revenue would still come in, but the traffic ca cameras are, have been proven around the country to be ineffectual and unconstitutional because in a court of law, you have to be able to be uh, addressed by your accuser and you cannot confront in a court of law a camera. So for that reason, uh, I suggest that uh, you consider that kind of a trade-off here. Knock down one camera, put up one meter, but otherwise, if we can't reach that kind of a compromise, no meters. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Um, we moved to Columbus a couple of years ago, and one of the things that really attracted us the most was just the friendly, welcoming, small town feeling that, that Uptown has. And the fact that in the afternoons at least, you could just pull up to any store and park there. Um, in the evenings, it's a little more difficult, but that's good too. Um, I really don't. Um, feel like having on-street parking, I, I, I think it would destroy a lot of that feeling that Uptown Columbus has right now that I, I think it values so much, and it should. Um, if we do need to raise more revenue, I would be more in favor of um, charging for the, um, the, the parking lots um, or the um, Um, the garages? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, no one really feels sentimental or nostalgic about uh, parking decks. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, you kind of maybe expect to pay that, and it, it would be much easier to enforce, too. If you have parking meters, then you're going to get into the business of um, towing people and booting people and having people talk with very friendly um, junkyard dealers, etc. Um, so, you know, I, I just don't think it would be good for Columbus's image to have the on-street meters. Okay, thank you for those comments. And I do want to just mention, I mean, again, uh, this is not in an effort to raise uh, any uh, additional revenue for the city. Uh, you know, what we've heard even before we started this process is uh, most of the uh, businesses and the employees in the uptown area just really get tired, get tired of having to go and move their vehicle uh, in every couple of hours because of enforcement. Uh, and this will give you the opportunity to control that. Uh, and so instead of the enforcement piece, and so I uh, just wanted to make that comment as well. Anyone else? My name is Jason Gamash. I have a few uh, buildings in the uptown area, and uh, I appreciate all of the hard work and effort that you guys have done putting this together. And I truly feel that we may get there one day mm -hmm. where we would need the assistance of a meter or, uh, or even pay garages again. Um, we have a lot of great developments coming in place that might increase the level of volume of, of parking issues we might have. But I feel today uh, from the merchants that I work with that we're not there today still because of COVID 
Uh, we're still having shortfalls in sales. Me personally, I travel from uh, Ninth Street to Broadway, First Avenue, Second Avenue, to different businesses almost every day. And I have not had a single issue finding a parking space fairly close to whatever business that I was going to. So as I feel this might be something that we look at in the future, as today, um, I think it's just not the right time. Okay, thank you for those comments. We appreciate that. And I can tell you, and I think I, I did put a copy of the um, 2013 um, uh, parking uh, survey that was done by uh, Fuss and O'Neill. Uh, and in that assessment, uh, and you will see in that document, uh, it talks about parking that is well distributed here in Columbus. On street parking, of course, as we know, is more popular, and the garages were significantly underutilized. And then, of course, the difficulty of visitors to locate and to find those parking garages. And I can say nothing has changed at this point. There, nothing has changed. Even in 2013, when they said that then, all of that remains relative today. Um, but I think what has changed in terms of the um, survey that was done, a parking study that was done, uh, they did mention in the short-term recommendations is that we um, provide for free or reduced garages. And our garages are free. So we were able to make that change. The only one that is still uh, for pay is the Bay Avenue garage, uh, just on the first floor of that. Uh, then it also mentioned for the short term for us to uh, start working toward preparing a plan for fees for on street parking. And that's what these conversations are about getting there at some point, the right point. And this may not be it, as we have been hearing. And then, of course, they talked about uh, allowing for permits for residential uh, use for those persons living uh, in the uptown area. And we're doing that, and we have been doing that for some time. And so, some things that we know we need to do um, is to reevaluate, as the plan has uh, also called for, for us to reevaluate the parking conditions uh, in the area uh, on an annual basis. Let's look at those two, four, eight hour areas. Are they, are they still relative where they are? Um, should some changes be made? So those are some things that we can be doing until we get to the point where we feel that parking meters are needed, are relative. So we can look at that. And it also talked about implementing a kiosk-based system um, for on-street fee collection, of course, and this is what um, we are also talking about, that type of a system. Uh, so uh, the 2013 plan was a good plan. Some things that we were able to implement, some things that we need to continue to look at. Uh, but I do agree that, you know, again, not much has changed. You know, we don't have a parking problem in Columbus. We just don't. You know, what we do have is the underutilization of our parking decks. We know that. We know that. Uh, and so we've got to figure out the best way to get people to utilize those things. I think when there are large events, we do, of course, people are in them, you know. Um, so one thing that, you know, we, uh, we, we, don't, we don't hear people telling us, oh, they're not clean, because we know that they're clean. Our garages are clean. We keep them clean. Now, do every now and then, on the Friday night, Saturday night, um, are they trashed? Yeah, so Monday morning, we got to get in there and clean them up. You know, um, so because of the, the use at, at, uh, at night and students and things like that. So we recognize some things that we've got to do, but um, we hear you loud and clear uh, that this is just not the, the moment for parking meters. Uh, and so we do appreciate that. Uh, and um, we're, not, yeah, we're still, still open for, for comments. I'm just making those, those statements. So we still uh, have a way to go before we do it. Yes, sir. I'm Cesar Bautista. Um, I came to Columbus three years ago with my wife. Mm -hmm. We opened one business that led to another one. Now they're going to be affected at some point by anything that is done in downtown. Mm -hmm. um, when I see this assessment, I'm not against or in favor of the parking meters. Mm -hmm. I just understand that in the course of three years, we have to assess our business every single week to see what we have to do to make it better. Sure. 
I don't, I cannot um, get my mind wrapped in an assessment that is almost 10 years old. More now that there's so many constructions, as Mr. Gamash said, of different buildings with different type of businesses or schools or whatnot. Mm -hmm. Installing something permanent right now without us knowing how the traffic is going to work, who are going to use it, if it's going to be effective or not. Like everyone else is saying, I just think it's not the right time, but the next time I would love to see another assessment. Because if we keep on relying on an assessment that was done in 2013, um, I don't think we have the right information to make the right decision. Thank you Thank for you. those comments. Yes, and that's why I mentioned that um, with that plan, you know, we looked at where what their, their recommendations were, what they assessed, and then where we are today. And I think everybody can agree that not much has changed uh, in the plan. And also, we can agree that there are some things that we need to do um, uh, consistently uh, in order to make some improvements and to see just where we are uh, in terms of the makeup now of the uptown area. So thank you for those comments. Anyone else? Yes, sir. Hey, my name is Joe Cup. I have just a point of information. Mm -hmm. uh, on this flyer, you have a picture of I guess a parking meter, but it looks high tech. This would be the kind that most of us grew up with, where you put a quarter in and you turn the dial and you get so many minutes. How much is this thing, this high tech thing? I don't know how much it is. Again, that is strictly clip art. That is, does not mean that that's what we're looking at. It's just a picture on flyer. That is not what we are considering. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Uh, Ms. Crawford um, talked about some of those, uh, uh, the technologies that we were looking at. So it's not necessarily about what you see in the flyer. Anyone else? Okay. Well, again, we appreciate uh, the opportunity to talk with you and to share with you. We will use these comments, and we have one more. Uh, on February the 2nd at pop-up uh, on Broadway. We will hear those uh, comments and we will take those back. Uh, and again, based on what we hear, what we heard here tonight, uh, this is not the right time. And so again, thank you. I heard you loud and clear. I appreciate it. Everyone have a great day.